Good morning. Okay, so this is what I want to be making. I've got a bunch of material and I want to make dovetail drawers. I want the material so when the jobs come up uh, in the kitchens and baths that I do that I can make my own dovetail drawers like that. So this is a process of me taking material that I had milled up and uh, oh, quite a while ago and the whole process that it takes to actually make the stock that makes these drawers. So this is the process of what I do. <laughs> you can take a look and see if it's worthwhile for you. All right. So it's been about six months since I put that material upstairs in my shop. So uh, now I gotta get a process of processing this into the planks and pieces that I need to make up all the sides for the drawers. So. What I'm doing right now is just optimizing all the material that I have. So this ash is, it's, you know, it's just not the best stuff in the world, but that doesn't matter because at the end of the day, all I'm trying to do is a glue up, a panel glue up for all these uh, sides and backs and bottoms or whatever I'm making in the ash. So in a sense, here, let me show you this right now. This is a, a couple of boards that I selected and this is actually how I, take out the material that I want out of it. So here, come take a look at this. So right here, you can see, now this, this is my fault because I never painted the end, so I'm losing pretty well two and a half to three inches off of each, uh, each board here. I could have done this a little bit better by sealing off the ends, but I didn't. The end of the day, I still want fresh pieces out of here. So if you look, I've uh, got this marked out to where this uh, crack is coming and so I can get a 24 inch piece here I've got a 27 and then here a 22 and a half because that'll be a drawer side uh, these will either be fronts uh, fronts and backs and a 24 can either be a front or a back or a side but you can see here you can see all the inclusion in there with that crack and then same thing here and then this bottom one you can see there's a bit of uh, uh, dark here, so I'm going to be cutting that out, but I can get a 48 inch piece out of here You can see I've got uh, a knot inclusion here, and then I'm left with 24 24 and 27 so that's basically how I'll take a board and I'll quickly scan it uh, Mark off where the uh, the debris is and then try to get usable pieces so out of here I try to keep my sides to certain usable sizes that I like. Ultimately, if I can get the longest piece possible, that's just great. But it doesn't work like that when you're cutting through material that's kind of rough like this. So I cut specifically for things that I know are going to be used on a regular basis for the size. So I'll cut the rest of the part parts up and I'll show you what the piles look like. So there's nothing really left of this. Yeah, you could cut into this and take a section of that out, but it's still got an inclusion there. So I think I'm just gonna get rid of it, it's just firewood. All right, so here's a bit of a nasty piece right here. You can see it's got quite a nasty split right here. Okay, and so how do you end up cutting something like that out? Because the other thing is it's got a twist and you can see it right up there. Okay, and there's no way that you're ever going to plane that out properly and hope to get that to glue into something. So you really have to cut these into smaller parts and pieces. So I know right off the bat that this is going to be a stop point here. I can't go any further than this. So what I'm going to do probably is... I'll cut this right here, cut it off there. I'll have this piece at about 16 and then here at about 24. So that's all I'll be able to get out of a piece like that. But you can see that's the waste and that's the waste. So that's kind of how I work backwards when I'm doing 
uh, a breakdown of a piece of lumber like this. And then where that branch inclusion is, that's probably where a large branch came into the tree. I'm just going to cut that out. And as pretty as that looks right now, it is miserable if you actually try to get that into a panel. It never wants to stay straight. Again, here's, here's what you want to do to optimize. I've got a knot here that's sitting, well, right from the end of the board to the knot is about 14 and a half inches. So if I'm cutting off, let's say, three inches off the end here, what I want to do is I want to cut the minimal out of this piece here. So my minimal size was 16, so that's what I'm going to cut it out at. So cut it here, cut it there, and then rip this, and you're left with that piece right there. Then I have the rest of this whole board to work with. Because if I try to get a long piece out of here, let's say I wanted something that was this long, then you end up losing that chunk out of it. So this is the sacrifice that you make out of a piece like that to get the yield that you need. So everything is on carts now. Uh, everything's in a specific length. So I've got them all piled up into whatever lengths they are. And this is what's left that I still have to cut. So these are the, uh, the knots and inclusions and everything that I still have to cut out of these things. So I just have to rip these to width and then fit them onto the carts, and then everything can then be jointed and planed. All right, so everything's been cut off. You can see, like, none of this really has any value to it anymore. There's all little cracks and stuff. And the reality is some of these cracks came in because when these logs were cut, uh, they sat in the yard for about... Oh, about a year and a half and uh, they start to split down the middle and, and do all kinds of wacky things if you were able to cut it like at the time of when it was was cut down all oh, your yield goes way up uh, but anyway so you know like knots and things like that it's all gone but you know if you look at the pile I get out of uh, basically what you would consider a scrap I'd say that's not doing too bad all right so I'm gonna get the piles all sorted again and get them over the joiner Okay, so I'm going to run these over the joiner, and you can see you can see this on uh, on this where I ran this through the table saw to get these pieces to what they are, like that thickness of about three quarter. Uh, you get a little bit of a cut that's a little bit off, but you can't stick that through a planer and hope to get that flat somehow. So you have to at least make one side decent. It has doesn't have to be perfect, but at least it has to be decent enough so that it has a contact surface on the planer. So take a look at this for a second. All right, so this is all clear up to about here, and there's a bridge right about in here, and you can see. But there's still a contact surface here and here, so that's all I need on that. That'll go through the planer without any problem. Right, so I'm going to be jointing the edges on some of these boards and you can see here this thing's got a, a bit of a bow going this way. So when I'm running it through the joiner I'm not looking at every single piece because it just takes way too much time. So really what I'm trying to do is I'm listening to it, my ears as the board goes through. If I hear any kind of skip in the board where it's missing the cutter then I'll just run it again. Like just like this. <laughs> You hear that? It's missing right there. There we go. Nice and clean. Alright, so I'm gluing up these panels here. And what I want to show you is the, uh, the way that I prefer to glue these things up. Because I don't want to just overpower this thing with a ton of glue, which it does not need. The other thing is, um, when I'm scaling off what I need here, I want 8 inch wide uh, boards at the end of the day. So I want uh, 8 inch, 16, 24, 32, or 40. Uh, so right now I've got a panel that's 41 inches, which will allow me 5 pieces out of this panel. So I just kind of mix and match uh, the boards as I go along to get somewhere 
about an inch over what I need. So I've got all my pieces uh, here standing up and I, this is all I do to put glue on is I put my finger over top of the glue bottle at the nozzle right here and then just run a bead down the middle of it. You don't need a, uh, a brush, uh, a roller or to spread it out with your finger because if you do this and you put an eighth of an inch bead down the middle of a, a three quarter inch piece you'll have no problem uh, clamping this thing up and the glue will spread itself over the top and the bottom and you should just get a light bead of glue coming out the, the top and the bottom you should just be able to see it just lightly because anything more is just a waste of glue and that really gets to my Dutch heritage <laughs> Okay, so here's all the glue you need. Watch this. And there we go. And then just line up the, the boards decently. It just helps to get uh, the yield out of it. So if you, uh, if you're, let's say you have an eight inch piece here and you want to cut a piece that's this long, but you've offset your boards, you, you might end up losing a full inch out of it. So, there we go. So what I like to do is, um, is have under over, I've got two clamps under and one over the top like this. Uh, the reason being is if you try to, uh, to just have two clamps and you tighten those things up, this thing creates a bow in your panel and that could really screw you up especially if you're doing tabletops or anything like that so this is the way I kind of like to do it and uh, so I just tighten these things up just snugly like that not a lot of pressure and then I make sure that everything is flat and just go along and the overlap on this side I want to have about uh, three to four inches on this side of the of the clamp, but somewhere between no more than 12 inches So this is about eight uh, eight to ten inches, which is fine by me And then once I know that everything is nicely clamped Then I just add more pressure to it Like that All right here take a look at the the bead on here Okay, you can just see the glue coming out on the top and that'll be roughly on the bottom as well. But that's what you want. It's really easy to clean this off and you haven't overpowered the panel with way too much glue. All right, so I've got these panels uh, glued up here, but what I want to do is I want to be able to cut these into manageable sizes. Uh, so I want eight inch pieces, but the reality is on a saw like this, you should actually be cutting a little bit bigger. So I'm cutting 16 and 3 16 Just because it's more manageable to put the pieces through, I can cut them and, and then I can stack them on a cart and then I'm going to do what's called seasoning. I'm going to let them sit for about almost a week on a cart and they're going to be about 16 and 3 16 uh, wide. And I'm going to stack them up and leave them for a week so that they climatize to everything because it's almost like when you're planing this stuff, you're wounding it. And it just needs to kind of settle back down. The other thing is you want to clean off all the glue off of your joints. Okay, and the reason being is if you leave it on there, first of all, if you try to fire it through the, your, uh, your planer with the glue on there, you're never going to get a good flat surface. The other thing is uh, if you don't clean it off properly, on high-speed steel knives, it'll actually, uh, you'll, you'll chip your knives if you don't clean the glue off properly. So, I like to do it when it's still soft, because it comes, comes off and peels off nice and easily. When it's, when it's hard, I find uh, the, the glue blobs tend to tear the wood uh, as it comes through. So, I prefer to do it this way.
So here's the stack. These are all cut. There's some uh, some eight inch pieces here, uh, 16s here, 16s here, eight inches here. And I put on top of here a piece of white melamine because I've got a forced air furnace in here and the, the air circulates through this shop. And you can be guaranteed if you do not cover up your panel, by the time you come here in the morning, it's cupped. The top panel will be probably cupped almost a quarter of an inch. So I cover up the panels and like I said, this is gonna sit for almost a week before I do the final cut to eight inches and then everything can go through the planer and sander. And the same thing, when I stack everything, it's all gonna be stacked on top of each other with a bit of weight and that'll keep everything from cupping. So I've got a panel here and it is just over 24. It's 24 and a half inches uh, wide by around four feet long. And uh, because that's divisible by eight, but it, this is a manageable size that I feel comfortable gluing up. I don't want to glue up a 40 inch uh, panel just because it takes uh, quite a bit of time to do it. But there's a, a way of doing a panel like this and it, it basically works from the center uh, out as opposed to going uh, right to left or left to right. This is the best way to do it because you work from the center and bring it back out that way. Same thing, I'm going to be doing the under over thing where I've got uh, clamps under and then two over to balance the panel so you don't end up with a barrel. So I've mixed and matched some of these pieces so that if I've got one that's going, um, that's got a bit of crown up, I make sure I have another one that's next to it that goes crown down. And what they do is they kind of counterbalance each other and then at the ends, those ones are perfectly straight. Uh, I'll reject anything that's got a really big bow in it, but if it's got anything within about an eight, I'm okay with that. So I'm going to glue these up and I'm going to show you how I go about doing this as far as manipulating it because uh, you kind of have to actually beat some of this into place. Smaller panels, it's not, not as hard uh, to manipulate, but when you're getting longer longer lengths like this, like let's say you're doing a tabletop. Oh my goodness, that uh, that's a lot of work. And especially with thinner material like this, it tends to uh, twist and warp uh, probably a little bit more than doing, let's say, eight quarter or, or anything like that. Got a little motor in there, there we are. Okay. Okay. So I try to line up the ends. I try to get them within a quarter of an inch of each other. And that's only for getting the yield out of your material later that you do it. Okay, so I'll push down wherever I can. Okay, and then snug up a bit more. And then I feel the panel for wherever there's a deviation. And I'm not worried about damaging the panel with the hammer because I've got a fat sixteenth to take off on, uh, on each side. Alright. And same thing. Just keep pushing your panel. It's these top clamps that are usually the hardest to do. See, I can lift it at the one corner here just to pull it up. There we have it. So here I can see my clamp has got a slight bit of a bow in it. Make sure that you get that flat. Okay, because this has to be flat, that has to be flat, and so on and so forth. So here again, there. Just release it, make it flat. 
Okay, and then when you start working these ends, this is where it gets very hard because some of them start to twist slightly, like here. fast because your your window of opportunity is about two minutes when this glue starts to set up. And each time I'm just tightening it up just slightly. So I've got good good squeeze out on there, but everything is nice and flush. So even here, you can see this was uh, partially milled, but the bottom is flush, so I can feel it. I feel that and feel that. And so long as that's good all the way across, I won't have a problem ripping this into eight inch pieces and then putting it through the planer. So here's what's left over from doing all the cutting. So if you look here, you know, there's just the tailings on everything with cracks in it and splits. And I've cut through the majority of it. And yeah, well, that's the reality of uh, when you're cutting. It's, it's uh, like when I went to school for uh, woodworking, it was, uh, we would always count on about 20% waste factor. And if I look at this, this is pretty well bang on. Uh, with 20%. I know that if I'm working with clean material that comes from my suppliers, I can uh, drop that down considerably. But in this case, when I was using air-dried lumber that was milled and done by me, and I didn't cut, or at least didn't uh, finish the ends of these boards on the cut ends, well, this is what you end up getting. So, at the end of the day, it was still pretty well free lumber other than my labor. pretty well to the point where I processed it into panels right here. So everything is 11 16 thick, about just over 8 inches wide, and then random lengths. I try to keep them to the longest lengths possible. My longest piece here is uh, 5 foot 6, so uh, 66 inches long. Uh, it's just difficult to, to do uh, bigger material. At the end of the day, this is what I want it to look like. It's going to be 9 16 thick by 8 inches, and I'll be able to put a groove in it after I've dovetailed everything. So that is the end result of it. So when I break this down to, to where I am right now, by the time I get this uh, planed and put through the sander, I, I still need probably another two, about two hours to get that completed. Um, the glue up and cutting all the material, bringing it down from upstairs where I have my, my stock, uh, cutting it up, running it through the planer and joiner, gluing it up to get it to this stage and running it through the planer and sander. I'm going to have at least two days into it. 
uh, and my total length of material, I get 266 lineal feet of 8 inch stuff. So I have 267 lineal feet of this material. I can buy this material if I want in birch as opposed to, uh, to ash. And uh, I got a price on it and I can get it 72 inches long, which is 6 feet. And it costs just over, 40, let's say $45. Okay, that's not delivered. I'd have to go pick it up. Uh, so if I do the math on that, uh, with the material that I have, I have 300 and, uh, sorry, 3,202 lineal inches of this material. Well, if you divide that out uh, into 72, that gives me 45 lengths of material if I was buying 72 inch lengths. So if I was to buy this material in birch, it would cost me $1,989. So basically $2,000 to buy it. So I've spent two days on material. Now the material I didn't pay for uh, because I milled it myself, but I didn't count into, the, into this equation the amount of time it took me to split the material, to stack the material, to let it sit outside, then bring the material in, bring it upstairs, <laughs> bring it downstairs, and, and so on and so forth. So, when you look at the amount of uh, time that it takes, you know, add an extra day. So it's, it's three days to do something that costs about $2,000. So, at the end of the day, did I make any money on this? Uh, from a production standpoint, no. I would not do this to make money. But I like doing it. I like the, the tactile experience of milling wood. I love the smell of it. I like the sound of it. I like the challenge of it. And, and just looking at pieces of wood, flipping them and, and that. So you got to kind of think about, okay, how much is that worth? And you go, okay, well, that is worth a lot. It's kind of like, like uh, uh, making clothes, making anything kind of crafty and never make really what you could buy it for. But at the end of the day, is that what it's about? In this case, no, I, I like the experience of doing it and I, I, I'd probably do it again. Because in a sense, I can consider it kind of free. I could be sitting doing nothing, which never really happens around here, by the way. But to have an experience in life sometimes is well worth the effort. So uh, I'm quite pleased with the way it turned out. Like I said, it's going to be a couple of months before uh, I use this. I'm going to let this sit for at least two months before I mill it. I just want to make sure that everything is is at a proper moisture content in here because everything was air dried, brought into the shop here, and uh, I don't have a moisture meter to check it. I would have left, would have liked to have left it sit for a little bit longer, but I'm going to let it sit for another couple months just to acclimatize in here. And uh, but at the end of the day, I'm happy with it and uh, fun project, and I'd do it again. All right, have a good one.